in today's fast-paced and competitive business world. Companies are constantly seeking ways to improve their efficiency, reduce waste, and increase profitability. This has led to the development of a variety of production and operations management systems, each with its own unique approach and set of practices. The art of lean, production systems and marketing strategies in the modern era, covers a variety of topics related to production and operations management. Julian Cambridge, how are you? Good evening, Graham. I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, good. You look really well. Remind me of where you are. In fact, you mightn't be where where you were last time we spoke. Where are you right I now? I am in exactly the same place. I'm in Hertfordshire. I'm not far from Hertford. So right. uh, I know you're across the way in Hitchin. So, uh, I'm in Hitchin. We could be neighbours there. We could, we're near enough. We're in the same county, and uh, it was a lovely day in Hitchin. I'm so sure it was a nice day in Hartford, too. Uh, we've just got a new little doggy, so we were out walking him this afternoon. It was lovely, very pleasant. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, it's been a sunny bank holiday weekend, so I uh, cannot ask for any more. Yeah, just perfect. Okay, so this is the second book we've worked on together. Uh, sorry, it's the, it's the second audio book we've worked on together. I'm just there. I am basking in your in your authorish <laughs> glow. No, I didn't write any of this. You, you're the author. This is the second book that we've turned into a, an audio book together. Yeah. Now this one is very different from the last one. Oh, I found it different anyway. Maybe you found some crossovers. The first book was the was about. It was all about everyday life on a scrum team which that's is correct. that's your area of expertise isn't it and just to, for anyone that doesn't know just explain what a scrum team is yeah so i work very much in the agile space um going into organizations and being able to work in an agile way uh, or in an agile fashion if you like and a scrum team um is a team built up of developers and product owners and software testers to enable a product to go from development stage um, into live where the customer can see and use it. Mm -hmm. So that's very much what a scrum team is and they very much work in the software development world. Yes. Now, this book really, I suppose then, takes it a stage further. It's called The Art of Lean and it's all about businesses becoming more efficient, which Absolutely. leads on to higher productivity and ultimately higher profits because they Absolutely. are more efficient. So how important then is it to run things in a lean way? Well, I'll just give a bit of an introduction to this book. Now, you would have heard me just give the explanation of the sprint, um, a day-to-day -day life of, uh, a day-to-day -day feel of life on a scrum team. Now, that makes all um, that makes a lot of sense to people that actually work in organizations where they use Scrum. So for that introduction, you may have a uh, host of people that may not have any idea what I'm speaking about at all. They've never yeah. heard of Scrum, they've never worked in software development. But what yeah. people do is that they live every day. Yeah. And for the best part, when I deliver agile training, which is sometimes I do, I cannot always give software development examples, just in case someone may not have worked in that field. So I tend to give examples of everyday life and you have different types of agile methodologies such as lean, um, such as Kanban, and they are used in everyday uh, walks of life. So this book is very much to say you do agile in more ways than you think you do. You might walk into a McDonald's restaurant and agile and Kanban is taking place in there. You might go to your local theme park, you might go to Disneyland and they're using an uh, aspect of Kanban to manage their queuing system. So it's very much um, embedded in, in your everyday life, embedded in your everyday life. The, the Uber that you got in is a Toyota car um, and Lean comes from the Toyota production system where they use the concept of Lean to um, produce their Toyota cars at, um, at efficient speed without declining on quality. So this book is all about giving real world examples um into how agile and lean and kanban is used every single day the first book um the sprint was very much how scrum is used in a software development team so what is kanban so kanban is very much a signal it's a signal 
to inform someone that something else is to be done. So just to give you a bit of history on, on, on Kanban, it's, let's say you walk into a fast food restaurant. Um, you go into a McDonald's, for example, you see a big screen and you order your meal on the screen. Then you get given a ticket number and that ticket says you are number 059. So you then look at the big screen and you see the screen and it says preparing and it says ready. And then in preparing, you'll see 059 and then you'll wait for it to move over to ready before you approach the counter and pick up your order. So that's very much a Kanban flow in managing queues, in managing queuing. It also manages the staff at the back who are cooking the meal. So you might say order received, perfect, that then moves on to the next column. The next column might be cooking. The next column might be in progress. The next column might be done. And therefore you're able to manage how much work you can handle at any given time. Now I'm giving a fast food example because that's uh, an aspect of life that people do every day. But if you turn this into your work schedule, what you do at work, um, how much work can you handle at any given time without overstepping the market being too busy and declining quality on your journey. So Kanban is a system that allows you to manage flow. That's what Kanban is ultimately. It allows you to manage the flow of work and it's used very much in more cases than you think. You think of the traffic light system, okay? So when the light turns green, it only allows, say, 20 cars in at any given time because that's how much that junction can handle. Any more than that, then you might have a traffic jam or a roadblock or it could cause chaos. So you take that example and you use it in software development or in other means of organizations. And you can really see how Kanban can be effective in managing workflow whilst maintaining quality. Wow, so it does, it's, it's all around us then. It's happening all the time. It's making the, the world of business and other things, even traffic flow, it's making it, it's managing those, what, what on the face of it are very complicated things going on. It's simplifying them and putting them in a logical order in the most efficient way. Absolutely. So the question to anyone or anything is how much can you handle at any given time without declining quality? And then it acts as a pull system as opposed to a push. So once you're finished the task, you pull the next task in and the task in front of you pulls the task that you've just finished. And that's how Kanban works. So when you heard me speak about columns earlier, so once yeah. the food is ready, then the completion column will pull it into completion and so forth. Right. All right. So it's, uh, and, well, you do go into it in, in quite some detail in the book, but you, you don't, you don't really lose the reader because it was pretty much new to me, but yeah. I found it fascinating that the book, and, and once again, like the, um, the, the life on, on the the sprint book about the scrum team, it isn't a long book book it's it's the book itself is written in an efficient manner to have yeah. just enough information for you to get the idea but don't Absolutely. go into all the minutiae that you would then drill down into if you wanted to to work in one of these systems or adapt a system like it for your own business and so Absolutely. yeah you've actually you've actually taken the concept of the uh, of of the efficiency and make and doing just enough to get yeah to, to get the information through without going too far as to lose people and go too deep. It really is a, it really is a nice piece of work the way you've done it. You give lots of examples in the book of lots of companies. You mentioned uh, Toyota, you mentioned McDonald's. There are, there are many others in there. How long did it take you to, to research this book? To, to, well, to look at the I've been systems? delivering agile training since about 2019. Um, so let's say that's about four years. And what I tend to struggle with at times is being one dimensional in delivering training where you can only give examples from one pond or, or from one pool of ideas. So it's very much me trying to think of what do people do every day? What types of films do people watch? You would have seen me reference the founder, which speaks about the speedy system, which is what McDonald's use. That's mm -hmm. very easy to communicate to 
um, a group of people that may have never met each other and may never have heard of Agile. It's a very yeah. easy way to communicate. Um, the golden circle, um, the concept of why, how, and what is uh, something that I've been involved in or, or interested in at least for the past eight years, to yeah. be honest. So these are very much things that I've been reading up on over time. It's only now that I'm authoring books, I just thought, let's collate everything <laughs> and put it all in one place. Um, Zara is one of the high street's best owned stores. They've got a system called the just-in-time system. So they don't keep stock. They only order stock as and when they need it. And what that does for Zara is it puts them ahead of the market. So they don't need to wait for the new season to, to create new stock. They just need yeah. to wait for the demand. Yeah. Yeah. And also the, the cost of, of real estate, of the real estate, they'd need to warehouse this stuff. You know, they'd need much bigger premises on the individual stores, but also they'd need kind of regional hubs that would be much bigger than if they're doing it just in time. So it really Absolutely. is. But with fashion, it's something as you know, ephemeral as fashion. It makes so much sense for them to Definitely. do that. Do you, do you think that's a major part of Zara's success? Because the high streets are having a tough time at the moment, but Zara it's, seems to be it, doing okay. It's not just the major part of Zara's success. It is Zara's it success. It is, because right. Because when you've got a just-in-time system, one of the first questions you would ask is, well, how long do orders take every time they have something on demand? But I believe Zara have built their own warehouse. So instead of importing it from the Far East, importing it from China or wherever other companies may import their clothes, they've got it on demand. So if you think of a, of, a, of a mechanic that might need to order parts for your car, it could take three days or it could take one hour. It all depends on what that system's like. When you think yeah. of many businesses that have gone under in the pandemic, they have delivery waiting times of two weeks sometimes, as opposed yeah. to having companies look at Amazon Prime deliver next day. What a system yeah. that is. Yeah, I and still don't know how Amazon's, they do that. I love it. Yeah. What is Amazon's core product? We don't, we don't even know. Anytime you want something, you'd go to Amazon, which is a, a, a one size fits all business. Yeah, you order from there and you either get it that evening or the next day if you've got a prime membership. Other yeah. companies may tell you three to five delivery days. Well, I yeah. want mine tomorrow. So where yeah. do you go for your business? Yeah, it's something that used to frustrate me in the old days because I would I would order something and they'd say, oh yeah, it'll be here in two weeks. And I would say to them, where's it coming from? Because the longest journey man has ever made is to the moon and you can be there and back in a week. So where is yeah. this coming from, you know? Well, uh, the thing is, it's all about the systems that you, Im uh, that, that you imply in, in, in your organization or in your workspace. If you've got a system such as the just-in-time system, the speedy system at, at McDonald's, Toyota production system that made Toyota one of the greatest companies coming out of Japan. If you've got a system in place that allows your organization to succeed, um, you're very much far ahead of the curve. It's not necessarily what you sell, it's how you sell it. McDonald's mm. by far do not do the best burgers. Mm. Um, Zara is not on a par with, I don't know, Louis Vuitton or Gucci or whatnot, but yet yeah, it's on the billionaire list and has been there for quite a while. So uh, Amazon, again, we just spoke about Amazon Prime. Look at Netflix, uh, you, you, you can, uh, what did I call it? Binge watch a series all in one day and download you know, how, many, uh, how, how many episodes at once. So it's very much about the system of how you do things. And once you're able to um, specify exactly what works and create a system that is unique, your organization, regardless of what it sells, can really flourish. And you've talked there about a lot of big organizations, Toyota, McDonald's, Zara. Yeah. Is the same true for, because there might be a lot of people watching this who run small businesses that maybe only have, you know, less than 10 employees. It does it, can it be scaled down as well to smaller business? I believe it can be scaled down. We haven't, I haven't uh, got any examples of those in the book because, of course, if you're giving the book to a wider audience, you need to speak about companies that people know about. But I yes. believe a system in everything. Um, there's a great system which... I haven't spoken about in the book. That's called Kaizen. It's another agile technique that comes from sort of 
uh, Japan and the Far East, and it's called Kaizen, and it's all about just making processes sim uh, easy and simple. Even if you look at the way you might run your household, um, and the, the tasks and the chores that you do day in, day out. How simple is it, or is it something that takes you four or five hours to do, but in another household it only takes one hour to do? How are you doing it? So it's very much just looking and streamlining. That's what Lean is. Lean is yeah. streamlining a process. Uh, yeah. Kaizen is making a process easy and simple. Kanban is managing the workflow. Yeah. And in business, time is money, because this is about time Absolutely. being a time efficient. In business, time is money. But in real life, time is life. You know, Absolutely. if you're wasting your life spending an hour doing something that could be done in 15 minutes with a better system. Yeah, this is how important this kind of stuff really is. The art um, of lean. Yeah, absolutely. So if you think, have you have you heard of the term man hours? Yes, so you might say um, eight hours for one person to do something, but one hour for eight people to do the same job. And then if you then use that as a system and you say, well, this system in the way we do things only takes X amount of time to do something. I'm not too sure what the numbers are with Toyota, but to produce a vehicle from start to finish is at record speed, well ahead of many other, uh, other companies. Now, Toyota is not, in my opinion, is not the best vehicle out there. Um, they're pretty good you, though, Julian. They're, you yeah. know, they're, they're very, yeah. very good vehicles, you know, uh, yeah. Absolutely, but the system yeah. and the way they deliver is by far, um, you know, miles ahead of, of many others. And you've got one of the biggest taxi companies we've ever seen in our lives in Uber, and everything's a Toyota. So that, <laughs> that, that, says, it, that says it itself, you know, so... Uh, it's a great it's a great book to read if you really want to understand systems thinking the art yeah. of lean is a fantastic book to read and it really gets you in the mindset of it's not just the product it's the way you sell the product yeah yeah now i would agree with that of all the systems that you cover in the book do you have a favorite i really like of course i used kanban to describe uh disney um, yes. I remember going to theme parks uh, as a kid and two hours queuing to get on a ride. And um, what the theme park uh, got from that is that whilst you're queuing up for two hours, you're not spending money, you're not buying food, um, you're having a poor experience and your value is two hours queue in exchange for one minute on the ride. Yeah. So they had to bring in a system that allowed well, for you to get that same enjoyment, but also do other things in the park. And yeah. that's where um, they used Kanban for Disney as well, indirectly using Kanban for Disney. So Kanban is still is very much a, um, an agile method, if you like, that I enjoy using and I, I, I admire when I hear about it. Um, also, the, the speedy system found in McDonald's, don't, they don't sell the best burgers by any stretch. But they sell the most burgers and are, have been the, the number one fast food company in the world for decades now. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably say I'd probably say can then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> to, okay. to answer your question. <laughs> okay. How did you find the experience of turning this book into an audio book? Um, not too much different to the first book, to be fair. Um, we'd worked together, of course, in, in, in the past. Um, I admire the fact that you can go into Audible, you can go into Spotify and be able to listen to listen to this book. And that's a lot how people uh, listen to material now. Again, yeah. it's all about time. No one has the time to sit with a book in hand. They want to be driving or in the gym and listening to it at the same time. So yeah. it's very much the method uh, going forward where um, books are concerned. So again, another enjoyable experience working with yourself, of course, it's always good to keep that, um, that pattern, if you like. So there's a bit of a signature there. Um, every book I put out is sort of narrated by yourself. Um, but very, very, uh, very creative and interesting to, to, to get this audio book uh, across the line. How about yourself? How was it doing the narration for you? It was great. I mean, one of the great things about 
doing the audiobook narration is the variety of stuff I do. I don't know if you've seen my website, but uh, I do all, every every genre. I mean, I, there's nothing I say no to. I have a crack at it, you know. And yeah. uh, you know, and and I might be working on a, on a science fiction or a romance or a fantasy in the morning. <laughs> but then to do a book like yours, it's like. Oh, this is really interesting, and I'm like, I'm it's like learning stuff, and I'm thinking, this is a book I would read, you know, if I, you know, if I had to take like a long haul flight. My parents, uh, Julie's parents, live in New Zealand, you know, and so yeah. we, we 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 occasionally take long haul flights. And up until recently, I used to go to conventions in the U.S. broadcasting conventions, and and I yeah. would always buy like a a really interesting book to take with me. I I think yours is one of the ones I, I would have really enjoyed reading about, and then. And then driving people crazy with, you know, you know, you know, in McDonald's, you know, when you <laughs> think, you know, you, you know, I'm just reading a book on it, you know. So I uh, it, it was a really, really enjoyable book to read. And there's a lot of really fascinating information in there. And for, from yeah. me, who will who I don't think in my line of work, but you just never know, because this is everywhere that I will need to know this stuff. I think it's good to know that, Definitely. you know, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I maybe I'll come up with a system based on on on, on Kanban or, or just in time <laughs> or something to work out how to do the right amount of auditions versus the amount of work I do. Because you do auditions, yeah. you don't get paid for those. The work yes. you do, you do get paid. And it's always a balancing act between, you know, should I do another chapter of this book I'm working on? Because I work on multiple books at a time. I'm, I've got yeah. 11 on the go at the moment. I like to keep it to eight, wow. but I've got 11 on the go. But uh, should I do another chapter of this book or should I do some more auditions? Well, when you've got 11 on the go, the answer is no, do the next chapter of the book. Yeah. But when you're down yeah. to about five, it's like, oh, maybe I should do a few auditions just to yeah. get that number just back up. So I suppose I am using a kind of a a lean system there aren't i um, potentially yes absolutely you know knowing how absolutely. how much time to spend on the work and how much time to spend on the the auditions because if you just spend the time on the work and you don't do the auditions when the work's finished you you've got a, a period where no money's coming in so you, you've got your you've got your dependencies <laughs> Yes, so I've got to work that. So maybe I need to go deeper. No, but it was, and you were very, very good to 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 work with. You you just put up the the. Uh, I don't know. Did we make any corrections on these? Did you get back to me with corrections on these? I don't no, know. Sometimes not on this one. I don't believe. No, no um, but because uh, I yeah, it was uh, no, it was very very enjoyable, and it was a very enjoyable book to read. I really enjoyed it. There's a lot in there for everybody, and and I say that for anybody watching this who thinks, oh yeah, well that's just like management people. Are needs and no it's uh it's really interesting how these things go and how it makes you think about other aspects of your life and Definitely. how if you, if you had a a more efficient system you'd get a lot more done and uh getting Absolutely. stuff done in this uh in this increasingly gig economy that we work in where you you're freelance so many more people these days since the pandemic are working freelance and understanding systems but then also you know if you are working for a big co corporation like a toyota or a mcdonald's or a disney or whatever is understanding how this how how the part you're playing in the whole overall system works it's also good yeah it is definitely great. definitely yeah. i'm a big admirer of systems thinking that's sort of my my thing and the first book the sprint was very much a point of view from a person so that's why it was a good first book it was a point of view from someone working in the industry and talking about their day-to-day -day. and then this book is just very much more of a step back and having a bird's eye view on what all these different organizations are doing and how you're seeing it every day in the everyday things that you do as well mm. so um that's sort of where the series is uh is continuing so i hope well, also more also getting the information from you who's been reading it and teaching it for years so you know yes. that because some <laughs> authors you know they discover this thing and they they'll they'll write a book about it but they don't really have an in-depth knowledge of it i know that's pretty unfair to some <laughs> authors but you know there are there are authors who find something that's like hot and they do a, they do some research and do a book about it but when i asked you, you know how long did you spend doing the research and you you basically said look i've been living the research this is my job yeah, is teaching people absolutely. this stuff which i think is even e even more you know important to have that knowledge yeah no, it's this great. book is is more or less a, a agile course that I teach. These are all the examples that I give. Right. All the examples okay. that I give when I deliver agile training. So it was very sort of straightforward to be able to pull all these examples and just have it in one script, if you like. Yeah. 
Okay, well, you never know. There might be somebody watching who might be thinking of some getting some training. How do we find out more about you, Julian? Um, so I've got a website, goldenagilesolutions.com. Uh, That's my sort of my, my, my agile training company. Um, I'm Julian Cambridge. I can be found on LinkedIn, uh, where you can see my career to date and everything that I do uh, where work is concerned. Excellent. I'll put a link to Golden. Run, run it by me again. Solutions. Golden Agile Solutions. Golden Agile Solutions. Dot co. Dot uk. There'll be a link That's to that correct. in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. There'll also be a link to the Art of Lean, the audio book. If you prefer to go for the written book or the ebook, there's you know once you once you click on this, it's an Amazon link, so you'll find it there as well. It'll be all in the same place. So you say this is the next one in the series. So what are you working on next? Well, I've just released two um more books on which are ebooks the audio will be coming your way i'm sure graham uh within oh the next great couple of love months to or so so you've got you've got another two books to narrate but i've got um another two books that are already up on amazon actually another two ebooks so uh have a look but for now let's uh talk about the art of lean and once we've got through this book which is the second in its sort of series if you like you can then go and check out uh, the other two books that I've got on there, one being called um, The Board. So The Board is very similar to The Sprint. The Sprint talks about Scrum. The Board talks about Kanban. And the fourth book is The Whole Game, uh, Systems Thinking in Invasion Sports. So I'm a huge football fan like yourself, Graham. We are both Liverpool fans. Yes. Uh, had a bit of a disappointing end to the season, but we uh, we go again next year. And I'm very much into, well, what is the systems thinking behind sports like football, basketball, NFL? I did my FA coaching badges about two years ago, and it was the first time I heard the term invasion sport, where you've got to sort of break down the, fen uh, break down the defense. They've then got to take the ball off you and then attack your area. And it's very much called an invasion sport. So systems thinking in invasion sport is, a, is another good book to, uh, to get your hands on. Sounds terrific. But right now, the one that is the audio book, the latest audio book that we've done together, Julian Cambridge, The Art of Lean. Thank you, Julian. And yourself. Thank you again, Graham.